Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how we can make this hologram material in Octane. Before we start I want to show you what I have in the settings and in a scene. In a scene I have just floor, cube which is just the wall behind, camera and main object. In the settings I have quite low quality here with direct lighting kernel but you can do whatever settings you want here it doesn't really matter in this particular scene I have here because there's no reflection and other objects to make use of it. What you really want to make sure is enabled is in the post is the bloom power here just to make things glow more and I just have here cutoff to make sure it's only on the bright parts of this material and yeah now we can start making our material. I will start from deleting previous one I have here so I will just get rid of it completely and let's go to create extension c for the octane and octane material let's apply it to our object let's double click at the material and go to the node editor in the node editor we want to click at our material go to basic and change material type to universal in albedo i want to go fully black here next step is ur in ur i will go with one and in the transmission i will go with specular and fully white. We will go back to the emission in a second. I will go to the common for now and here I will enable the fake shadows. Now we have completely invisible material here so I will don't have to mess with the opacity in the material so I will just have to focus on the emission here. I will start from texture emission here and everything will be done in here. As I said uh, I don't have to use the opacity here at all. We'll start from adding composite texture to texture and in here we'll add our first layer. The first layer will be sine wave here. We'll connect it to the texture, add transform and projection to it. And we can right click at the sine wave and cell node it so we can see what's going on. First of all, we'll go to the texture projection and change projection from mesh UV to XYZ to UVV. Now we want to go to a transform and lower the scale of it. This will result in those lines. And we need to change the direction of those lines. So in rotation Z, we'll just snap it to 90 degree and I'll make those lines a bit bigger, like so. We can disable soul node here and let's go back here to the texture emission for a second and let's lower the power so we can actually see something. For now, we can go with one so we can tell what's going on here. Our next uh, step will be to add another layer. In this layer, we want to add fall off and change in a layer blend mode to multiply. You can change the power again to bigger value this time. And in the fall off, we can change a few settings. We can make it a bit tighter if we want to, or we can make it wider. I think I will keep it at six, which is nice balance between those settings. And if we want, we can change the minimum value here to make it a bit more glow in an inside instead of being fully black. So I will keep it at 0 0.01 like so. And maybe to make it more interesting already, we can add RGB spectrum here to the distribution and change the color to maybe something like this. Now we'll add another layer here. This time it will be dirt and because it's a mission, we don't have here shadows or anything. So we can't again fake it with those settings. I will show you in a bit what I mean. If I solo the dirt, we can change the radius to something quite big like so. And we already have like ambient occlusion, which we can use in a emission to fake a bit of shadow. And I will add a bit more strength to it and change the tolerance to full, which is 0.3. Make sure it's it's only include itself. So I will change in the include object mode to self. And if we disable cell node now and change in the layer to, of it to multiply, um, maybe I will just get rid of the file of here so we can see the difference. You can see now we have this ambient occlusion included into our emission. Um, we can actually change here maybe opacity a bit. So it's something more like this. Uh, now let's add another layer. We'll do another fake shadow here or light. We'll add fall off again and change it to the second mode. This will make uh, something like a shadow from the top. So it looks kind of like it glows from the bottom. As you can see, I can change the settings so it's a bit more pronounced. But yeah, I will keep it at maybe 10 so it's still visible. And maybe I can change the opacity slightly again to 0 0.9 maybe. By doing those layers here with dirt, 
follow and another follow, we already fake some light direction, uh, etc. So it's a bit more defined. It's kind of flat glow on the object. I will add one more layer here, change the blend mode to add, and it's gonna be fall off again. And with a bit more thin line to it, like so, just so we can have a bit more outline around our hologram material. And also we can add another layer if we want. Those five layers are most important, but everything you will add at top of it will be just extra detail to add a bit more variation to it. Uh, what I like to add here is custom pattern and it's, I think it was procedural effect. And here I will change the type to kaleidoscope, which uh, looks like this. We can actually connect this projection here. And let's see if this transform is good enough. It's actually a bit too small. So I will add here a separated transform, which also we can change the rotation Z here and do something like this. We can also disable the lock aspect ratio and scale it in one direction like so. So with more like lines, if we disable the soul node now and go to this layer, we can change from blend mode normal to probably soft light is the best solution or the overlay. I will change it to soft light. This will blend with previous uh, layers we have here. We can change the opacity here to maybe 0 0.7 or maybe even 0 0.5. So it's less uh, pronounced. Now we can go back to the texture emission and get rid of the RGB spectrum from the distribution and add something else there. So I'll go to the custom pattern and add iridescent here and connect it to the distribution. Iridescent is kind of like a gradient on a fall off or actually gradient after the fall off. And we can change the iridescent weight to make it more saturated and frequency, which is basically like scale of the gradient, I would say. So if we go with something like 0 0.2, uh, we'll have less colors here, which is a bit better because it's less chaotic. Uh, if we disable the cell node now here, we can see what we get. I really like this one, so I will keep it at this color. Maybe I will change the power so it's a bit more glowing. Also, this shader works with custom texture. So I have here texture of this object. If we add another layer and we connect it to our texture, we can change the blend mode to maybe um, maybe soft light or it should work better with color. Also, we better disable the distribution here so we actually get colors from it. And yeah, uh, so now this layer basically takes color from this texture and apply it to previous layers we have by this blend mode. And if we change the order here with kaleidoscope here we can also make those nice details on top and even we can add the iridescent here back and just lower the weight and change the base color to white so it's neutral here so we can actually blend those things together slightly like so and also you can make animation here of these lines. So in a sine wave, you want to animate the transform Y here. So basically just go to the first frame, click at this dot here, go all the way up to the end. And if you want it to go down, just go to the minus. If you want it to go up, go to this side and just click at this point again once you set the value. And now you should have animation between zero and value you set. In this case, it goes up. It's it's probably not too visible right now because of the noise, but once you render it out, you will see. Uh, maybe it's a bit more visible if I saw now it. You maybe you can see it. And also here in a kaleidoscope, we can change the time, which looks really cool if you animate it. So I'll click at this point here again, go all the way up to the end and change it slightly because there's a lot of movement going on here. So I'll just move it by 0 0.5 almost and click at this point again. So now we have a bit of this glitch like animation. If we cell node it, we can see it again. And yeah, we can also, of course, disable this texture we have here and just use our iridescent here to just be main color of this hologram material. And yeah, you can do way more with this shader. It's up to you how you set those settings. You can do whatever you want here, maybe go with full one here so it's more transparent. And yeah, also um, if we put here maybe 
cube and just put it behind and I will just create quick material here just to showcase it. So I will add a mission and you can see it's it's transparent. This material is fully transparent without going into the opacity settings. We just set it in the specular at the beginning of the tutorial. So it's really cool. And I think that's it for this tutorial. Hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today. My goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. So be sure to subscribe if you want to be up to date. Also, you can follow me on the Instagram where I'm usually posting ahead what my next tutorial will be about. And I think that's it. See ya.